it's Sandy from Esfernel Arts. So here's the deal. Uh, the prompt for the nature series is Dragonfly, and I decided to do a steampunk dra dragonfly. And I began um, by getting a sketch ready, and then I traced the body part onto this paper and drew the wings, and then I started working on the cogs and all the things I wanted for steampunk. And then I kind of thought about it and was testing out some colors and realized that I had been working on the um, Canson, well, it's 140 pound, 300 G paper, but it's made with cellulose. It's not 100% cotton, which might be okay. However, when I was testing out my colors that I wanted to make uh, copper with, I was testing them on this paper on another sheet and um, I didn't like it way, the way it looked so I spent all this time drawing this dragonfly and all the details and I mean it took me hours yesterday to do all these details and then I realized I'm on the wrong paper and I strictly went for the size of it I didn't stop and think you know how you get when you're busy I didn't stop and think about <laughs> what I was doing so what I'm going to do is I am going to take, I think I'm going to use the 03 micron and I'm going to outline this in marker and then I'm going to trace it and get ready to do it on another sheet of paper but I'm also going to uh, paint on this one and see how it work, comes out and see the difference. It's not, it wasn't meant to be a comparison video but it may end up there. I'm going to um, speed this up as I go through it, and uh, we'll take a look at the results. So it should take me a couple of days to get this these two things done. And I'm going to turn on some music and just drink my tea and get started. All right.
All right, so I've been experimenting. It's been a couple of days, and I am going to do, just talk about how I'm doing the copper. This is the effect I want to achieve on anything that I want to be copper. Hang on, I'm checking the phone. All right, I think I'm good, and I think I'm in the right landscape mode. It's my, forever my problem. All right, so um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in four layers. So the first layer will be the lightest layer and those are the highlights. So what I've got on my brush is a mixture of, now I'm using my Pelican paints. I can't remember what was in the previous part of this video, but I'm using their yellow and their, the red, which I think it's, I don't know, Carmine or whatever it is. Um, it's the first red and it's like a cad red. So I'm using the equivalent, their equivalent of cad yellow and cad red and I've made a very yellowish light mixture. And that is actually what's on this key. But I'll go ahead and do, um, oh, I don't know, I'll do this one over here. Let's just do that one. So I might need a smaller brush for this. But I'm gonna put this in. So that's what I've done on a few of these, um, on the bell, on the key, and it's already dried. So actually, rather than finish this, well, now that I started, I gotta finish it, of course. And then, if you want a little patina in, I'm taking a clean brush, and I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of my turquoise, which is way over here, and I'm going to just drop it in a couple places so that it can kind of run in of the yellow and start to let that bleed in so I I get the different colors working and this is just this is actually the highlight color so this has to be the first base for the lighter ones to go in all right and so that's that and that's what um, I did pretty much I perfected it a little bit more on some of these but we'll let that dry I think I'll work on the key and so what I'm going to do for the key now is go to the next. Since that's dry, I'm using my base shape, uh, base colors. And for the base colors, I'm using Burnt Sienna and Cad Red Light. So I've made a mixture. Ah. You know, me and cleaning the brush. It's all over my counter. Whatever. Okay, I'm using um, that mixture and I'm just going to go in and I'm using um, Wet on Dry and I'm, this is going to become the base. So what I want to leave, I decided I'm going to leave the light source coming from the right, so I'll leave some highlights to the right and I'll start moving the um, base colors in a little bit on the left, but I'll leave, leave some of those highlights on the right is what I am trying to say. That's my little recipe card. So I practiced these beforehand on a sheet of scratch sheet of paper to see what I which results I liked and I took notes and then I kind of went with that I want to keep a little of the turquoise in here so but I also want that to be darker so I think what I'll do is bring my little brush over and just add some more turquoise as I go that's a little darker than I might want here and kind of let some of those colors run into each other this really works well for the patina color that I want and I'll just put a little more turquoise down on the key in different areas hopefully I'm already dry there so this paper dries fast and I am using wet on dry so all right, that, I'm going to blend that because that is not necessarily what I wanted, but it doesn't, I don't think it matters that much for this copper texture, you know, old copper texture that I'm trying to get. I don't think I need the blending quite as much because it looks pretty good when you have, you know, different textures and lines and things. 
All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and I'm going to come back with uh, the next color, which is going to start doing um, becoming my shadows. And that color, let me get that clean brush, for the shadows, let me dry this. So my next layer is going to be the shadow layer and I'm using, um, let's see, for my shadow I want Burnt Sienna and Raw Umber, which is going to come over here and a little bit there, maybe a little on this side, a little here. do is d deeper shadows and that's this and that is um, let's see that's the burnt sienna with the ultramarine blue and some ivory black so we've got a little uh, mixture made up of that already from this one I just need to wet it I think I did this like three or four days ago and I don't it's a thin key I don't want a lot uh, I probably should go to a smaller brush maybe I'll do that but the worst part of watercolor for me is the blow drying and the waiting and stuff. I just don't, I'm not a patient person. I don't know anybody who is, too many people who are, but I'm certainly not. And I just have a hard time just waiting that part of it out. I, um, but you have to, and you can't, you, otherwise you make mistakes, which I have all over the place. All right, so I'm putting this right along the edge and I can go in and get a little, grab a little more ivory black and a little more ultramarine blue. And if I want it just a little bit darker in some areas and just a little, I want it uneven. So bring it some over here and you know how it is on aged metal. But I like that you can use watercolor to make this, so. My effort to be more patient, I actually, in, and more zen-like, I actually have a rock with the word patience carved into it that, um, believe it or not, when I was teaching in the classroom, I used to keep it in my pocket and I would just, every time I wanted to just lose it, you know, teaching high school, it's kind of easy to get sucked into the drama that goes along with teenagers. And every time that happened, I would just squeeze that rock in my pocket and just be like, <laughs> okay, patience, give me patience to just accept that this is how it is. And I wouldn't say I've gotten any better at it as an adult than I did as a teenager, but ooh, I really like that piece right there. All right, so it's I'm getting the effect I need, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this on this particular paper, I've already traced this and drawn it on a piece of Arches uh, cold press and I'm going to do it on that and I'm not sure I want to add the marker. I'm going to do it before I marker it and then see if I want to go around everything with marker. Um, but that's on there. And then um, I am going to do silver on some of the pieces like this washer is going to be silver. And that I will, I have to go, I have a couple hours, I have to go bike riding today with my buddy and we're going in a couple of hours. So I could do the silver, but I, I haven't really perfected it. I'm sort of still playing with what I want. Um, and that requires indigo. So I've done a light wash of indigo. Uh, I'm using my Schmincke. Shout out to Hercules Poirot, if I'm saying that right, who um, responded and commented and told me how to pronounce this as Schmincke instead of schminky or schminke or whatever I was saying, who the heck knows, you know. And I'm going to try to say schminka from now on. But I have an indigo in here now that I've added. And um, I'm going, I did a light wash of indigo. And so now I'm going to just do another very light wash of indigo before I begin to bring in some um, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to make it a little more silver. But I, I want to do this little wash again. So let me spritz that 
have to be careful. There's another color in there, which I don't have marked off, so I end up using that. All right, let's go. Really light, very light, even lighter. Okay, let's see. That might even be too much. Too much water, that's for sure, but more indigo than I wanted. Maybe, I don't know. That's pretty pretty light. I got it in there. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm gonna come over here and do this one over here. A little more indigo. And then when once that's dry, I'll add another layer. See, that's too blue. Getting silver is interesting. Now I do have silver paint in one of my Prima palettes, at least one of my Prima palettes, I think actually in a couple of them. But um, I am, hopefully not getting my head in there, uh, I am not going to use that. I'm going to recreate the look of silver if I can using these paints, using my Schmika paints. And let's see. So my darling daughter is a cosplayer and she was sprinkling gold paint and a gold acrylic. And not only is it all over my blow dryer, which is fine, but it's also all over this picture which was next to her when she was doing it. But what are you gonna do? She's my daughter, what am I gonna do? Just say, honey, next time, could you move my painting? All right, so I want that to dry, I'll be right back. All right, for the next layer, I'm going very lightly with everything. It's going to be a little indigo, a little bit of tiny, tiny bit of French ultramarine blue, and a tiny bit of the burnt sienna. Tiny, tiny bit, tiny bit, all right. That's actually not too bad, and did I, I didn't dry that one, <laughs> of course. And I'm going to just add some of that. I haven't decided how much tarnish I want on here. So I'm playing with it and I'm playing with it in front of you guys. Mostly because the weekend went by and I didn't have a chance to really work on it. I, I think I started this Saturday morning, this part of it, trying things out. All right, that's not bad. All right, since I have um, so many cogs and sprockets and gears to work on, I'm going to go ahead and do these on my own. I may or may not film it. Um, I'm afraid if I try to film it, it's gonna take me forever to get it up here. So, um, if there's anything special like, you know, I'm gonna use silver. I plan to use silver on these, uh, I think they're called nuts, but I don't think it's a bolt. And then on the compass, I plan a little bit of silver on that. But mostly everything else is gonna be pretty much copper and I'm gonna try for a little bit of brass. And I'm kind of loving the way this bell turned out and that was really just the base colors for the copper. Anyway, I'm gonna work on that and then I'll be back like I said, I'll either film it or do you really need to see me do all of those? And then um, I'll probably end this video and then do it on the other paper on another video and compare it. All right, I will be back later.
I'm back from my bike ride and I picked up the brush and started working and I thought I better get over here and record what I'm doing so I don't leave it out. So I'm working on the silver parts and I've laid down a light wash of indigo from the Schmincke and um, I'm gonna work on this middle piece here and what I'm doing is mixing so it's a little French ultramarine, a little Delft blue, and a very, very little bit of the cadmium yellow or whatever yellow it is that the Pelican set has. And I'm going over very light, watery wash, just back over, just to give it a little bit more. I don't want it to be super blue. I, I gotta be careful about the yellow so I don't end up with green. I don't want very much here, just enough. So I'm going to go around and do the rest, whatever I want silver with these same layers. And then all I really have to do is add all the layers to the copper. Uh, this one is finished and that one's finished and everything else is not. So I'm gonna go in and each one takes four layers. I'm probably not gonna film it, but then I'll come back at the end and show you how it all comes together and also what I've decided to do with the outside of the wings because I'm kind of up in the air as to how, what I wanna do with that. So I'll come back and talk about it later. Just to finish this up, um, I wanted to just show what I did to the silver and how I did the background and then I'm probably just do the last finishing touches and get that on there but um, almost everything's done so I have on my brush a um, what I used for the darkest shadow on the copper which is let me get this right because I don't want to mess it up it's burnt sienna ultra marine blue and ivory black and I've made a mixture I have it on the very tip of my number eight Grumbacher round and I'm just going to tarnish up the silver a little bit so let's see so I'm working on this one and I'm just going to come around as a shadow I'm going to keep my brush with clear water on here just to blend it in so it's not too extreme but these colors seem to really work. They're just getting a nice, I just want some markings and to mar it up a little. I don't want, you know, perfect. to do here is just work on this little bit of the background what I did is I took a little of the yellow that I have used the whole time and in small sections I'm going around with the yellow then I'm picking up some of the cobalt turquoise and I'm going over it and mainly I want turquoise but I wanted a more greenish turquoise than I was getting oh, and so the yellow helps that then I'm going to charge in a little bit more turquoise where I want it. And then lastly, I just come over and get a touch of the base color, which is, or rather might be my highlight color, with it just a little bit more cad yellow and a little bit more red a very little red I really want it as they move out towards the wings I wanted to make it a little more turquoise and a little less of the red so I'm doing the same thing in small sections okay just about done let that dry and uh, be careful not to touch it but I noticed that uh, oops that is not what I meant to do Let's try that again so um, 
I use the same technique on the outside of the wings for the most part as I did on the all the copper in between and I haven't finished this one so I'm going to finish that one and then I'm going to call it good I am also going to end it there take a picture there of it and then I think I'm going to come back in and work on some kind of a background here but that's going to take me a long time and again I'm not exactly sure how much time I want to devote to it since this is the practice piece but also I'd like to know if it needs the background for the final piece so I just totally took away all my beautiful color I worked for by not waiting till it dried and that is so typical of me with the, I, I was talking about the lack of patience wasn't I so I'll stop talking concentrate I'm pulling all that out and let that dry and then I'll go back in and I want this to look like this but I have to be patient and let it dry anyway I'll post uh, my thumbnail will have the final um, results but that's pretty much it so thank you for watching hit uh, like subscribe and share and I will see you next time